guys, I didn't know what I was getting myself into. <laughs> Hey guys, I'm Yonna Marie and welcome to my channel. So, in this video I am creating my very own bullet journal. It was not easy and I made a lot of mistakes, but that's why I did them so you can watch them and then not make the same mistakes. So it will probably be a lot easier for you guys to do this because you won't have to make the same mistakes that I did. But in the end, even though it was a bit difficult and very time consuming and I made a lot of mistakes, it turned out very, very good. And I can't wait for you guys to see what it looks like. It turned out so good and I'm really proud of what I created. Okay, I won't hold you guys for any longer. Let's get into creating our very own bullet journal. The supplies you'll be needing for this project are paper in your preferred thickness. I used 160 GSM paper, different sized rulers, a pencil and eraser, white thread, a needle and fabric scissors, binder clips, the bigger the better, wood glue, hard cardboard, a big piece of colored paper for the book cover, strong scissors, clear tape, stickers to put on the cover page, clear adhesive book covering plastic, and ribbon for the bookmarks. You'll also need a printer, all-purpose glue, and maybe a precision knife. The first thing you're going to do is go to the website gridsley.com. This website allows you to print different kinds of grids. You can set the kind of grid you want, the size of the grid and even how light or dark you want it to be. For my bullet journal, I set it on the square dots, 5mm apart and a very light color. Then you just click on print. For this bullet journal, we're going to create multiple booklets that we're going to attach to each other later on. The number of pages per booklet depends on how thick your pages are. Because I am using 160 GSM paper, I decided to make each booklet consist of 5 pages printed on both sides, which are going to be folded in half to create the booklet. Take one of the pages that you printed out and measure at the length of the page where the middle of the page is. I used a calculator to divide the length measurement in half so that I am completely sure it's accurate. Then mark it with a pencil. Make sure to measure it in two or more places. It's very important to be accurate with this step because this is where you're going to fold the pages in half. Connect the marks by drawing a line with a pencil and ruler. Next, we are going to measure the width of the page and divide that by 13 to determine where to make marks where we are going to sew the pages together. The width of my page is 210 millimeters. If I divide that by 13, I get 16.1538, etc. So I just make a pencil marking every 16 millimeters. This will mean that one of the spaces will be a bit bigger than the others. But that's fine, as long as the markings are on the center line that you drew, and you end up with 13 spaces and 12 markings. Now you're going to take that page and put it in front of the other pages for the booklet. Make sure that they are neatly behind each other. Use the binder clips to hold the paper in place. I accidentally started sewing before clipping the papers together. This was mistake number one. Cut off a piece of thread about the length of your arm and put it through the needle. Make sure the two strands are equal length and tie them together in a knot at the end. We're going to use a double strand for the booklet. Put the needle at the first marking and use a stainless steel ruler mini hammer or something similar to hammer it through the pages. You can try to press it through or keep hammering on it until it goes through. 
then pull the thread through. For the other markings, you're going to do the same, but you're not going to pull the needle through. You're just using it to make holes because there aren't markings on the back, so it would be hard to accurately hammer the needle through from the other side. The reason why I pulled the needle through the first hole is to prevent me from losing the needle or letting it drop somewhere. After you've made all the holes, you can now stitch the pages together. I'm just sitting here. I got time. It's clear to see. From up here, the world's. After you've pulled the thread through the last hole, make a knot. Try to make the knot as close to the paper as possible by holding the loop against the paper while pulling the thread gently like I'm doing here. We meant to be in the great outdoor. If you want, you can make another knot over the previous one to create a double knot. Cut off the remaining thread. Now we're going to remove the binder clips and we're going to fold the paper to create a booklet. You want the side with the ends of the thread to be on the outside of the booklet, so make sure of that before you fold the paper. Make sure that the corners of the middle piece of paper inside the booklet line up before you press down and fold the booklet. I folded it down the middle first and then went to the sides. The thread should be right on the outer edge after it's folded. Use something flat to press down the folded edge. Make sure that whatever you're using has a soft edge. I'm using a flexible ruler. And there you have your first booklet. Now you just repeat this process to create as many booklets as you need for your bullet journal. I decided to create 7 for mine, which will give me 70 bullet journal pages printed back to back, which gives me 140 pages in total. Next, we're going to attach all the booklets together. To do this, we're first going to use the binder clips to hold all the booklets together. Make sure the folded edges line up. I ended up only using six of the seven booklets that I made because I didn't have big enough binder clips to hold them in place. Double check that you're happy with the position of the booklets. Now you're going to want to put something really heavy on the booklets. Make sure to first put a piece of paper on top to protect the booklets. I decided to use a really heavy cast iron pot. Also make sure to put something under the booklets if you're working on a table that you don't want to get full of glue. Pour some wood glue into a container lid or anything similar. Use a paintbrush or anything similar and brush the glue onto the side of the book. <music> 
After you've thoroughly covered the side of the book, you're going to paste a piece of pre-cut project paper or thin cardboard onto the glued side, which is going to create extra hold for the booklets. After that, you're going to wait at least an hour and a half for the glue to dry. Now it's time to create the book cover. And here is where I made a big oopsie. I worked out the length of the book cover by just multiplying the width of the book by 2. I didn't take into consideration the side of the book or the overhang of the book cover. I don't know where my head was, so please make sure that you don't make the same mistake. Make sure your book cover is long and wide enough. I actually already also covered the book cover with the colored paper before I realized that I made it too small. At least this gave me practice on how to put the colored paper over in the correct way because that's also something I did wrong at first. So how you create the book cover correctly is you first work out the length you're gonna need which will be the width of the book times 2 plus the width of the side of the book plus some extra for the overhang of the book. The width of my book is 148 millimeters, the width of the side is 15 millimeters and I added a 10mm overhang on each side, which equals 331mm. Mark it on the cardboard and draw lines where you'll be cutting. To work out the width of the book cover, measure the length of the booklets and add a few millimeters for the overhang. Cut the cardboard out where you drew lines using strong scissors. Now that we have the cardboard cut out, we have to bend it. It's important to bend the cardboard first before covering it with the paper because it uses a bit more material to cover when it's bent. I learned that the hard way. First, we need to find the middle. Measure the length and divide that by 2. Then mark that measurement. Do this in two or more places and connect the marks using a pencil and ruler. Next, we need to measure where the book cover is going to be bent. Take the width of the side of the book that you previously created and divide that by 2. The width of mine is 15 mm. Divided by 2 is 7.5 mm. Now make a marking on either sides of the center line that measurement apart. So I will have a mark 7.5 millimeters from the center on each side. Also do this in two or more places and connect the markings. To make sure it's accurate, place the book that you previously created in the center to see if it fits. Once you are certain that it fits, go over the lines a few times with the pencil while pressing hard. Next, you're going to use your ruler to help you bend the cardboard. Place the ruler on the line you drew and gently but firmly press the cardboard upward. Make sure to press firmly on the ruler so that it doesn't move. I would recommend bending the cardboard the other way as well, so that you don't have to struggle bending the book cover open after you've already assembled the whole book. That's also something that slipped my mind during this DIY. Now on to covering the cardboard. After my previous failure, this was the only workable piece of blue paper I had left. Ideally, you would have more overhang at the top and bottom. First. Work out how much paper you would need to cover the cardboard. Place the cardboard book cover on the paper and mark on the one side where it needs to be bent. Then, using your ruler, bend the cover paper. Place the cardboard on the paper again into the bend and glue the paper onto the cardboard using wood glue. Use a paintbrush to flatten out the glue. Be 
Because the glue takes a while to dry, I used some clear tape to hold the paper down. Bend the book cover closed and bend the cover paper over the cardboard to work out how much paper is needed. It's important to measure it while the book cover is closed because it takes more paper to cover it when it's closed than when it's open. Hold the paper firmly against the cardboard while you're opening the book cover and mark where you'll be bending it. Test to see whether the book cover can close comfortably before you cut off the excess and glue down the other side. Cut the paper at the bended corners of the side of the book. Open the cover and fold the metal flaps that you just cut inwards. Now glue them down. Check what it looks like when you close the book cover. Cut off the inside flaps on the sides so that the paper isn't doubled. Also cut all the corners of the flaps. Fold the flaps over the cardboard and glue them down. Remember to keep checking if the cover closes comfortably after each flap is glued down. you can decorate the cover however you'd like. I decided to use golden sticker letters to write planner on the front. I first drew a very light pencil line of where I'd want to paste the stickers. Then I marked where the middle of the page is so that I know where to stick the first sticker. I started with the middle letter of the word so that it's nice and centered. After the stickers are all pasted on, I erased the pencil line. Now I was actually supposed to glue in the bookmarks in the middle of the book cover before gluing in the book on top that we made previously, but I forgot so I made a plan later on. Make sure to remove the clear tape from the center of the book cover before you glue the bookmarks and book in. Also rather use all-purpose glue than wood glue for the bookmarks. I wanted the pages to be aligned more neatly on the right side, so I taped the ruler to the front page and used a precision knife to cut off the right edge of the pages. This was pretty difficult and it took a long time. It also didn't come out perfect and I had to go in with scissors later on. I would recommend you to not do this step and to just leave it as is. Unfortunately, I forgot to film how I glued the book to the book cover. Basically, you put wood glue in the middle of the cover between the bended edges. Use a paintbrush to flatten it out. Place the book in the middle onto the glued part. Make sure it's centered. Close the book and then let it stand like that for at least an hour and a half or more. After it has dried completely, we're going to cover the book with clear adhesive plastic. First, determine the size of plastic you need and cut it out. 
Make sure you have enough overhang. Pull off the paper on one side and fold it flat to keep it out of the way. Put the journal on the paper and place something inside to keep the book open. Fold the plastic over and smooth it out from the edge inward. Now take the loose edges of the paper under the plastic and pull it down slowly, stopping to smooth out the plastic on the cover from the middle outward and continuing bit by bit. Cut off the plastic flap on the inside. As soon as you're done with the one side of the book, cut into the plastic at the bended edges. Then cut off the corners. Then bend the plastic over the edge and smooth it out from the edge forward. It seems like my camera didn't capture where I covered the rest of the book, but it's quite straightforward from here onward. Just be very patient and work slowly. There are also a lot of videos on YouTube that show you exactly how to put clear adhesive plastic on books. Now comes the part where I added my bookmarks. I decided to glue them onto the last page of the book because this page is going to be covered anyway which you will see in a few minutes. I used all-purpose glue for the bookmarks. This glue dries fast, so I only needed to wait around 10 minutes. I printed out two pages, which are going to be pasted on the inside of the book cover, in the front and in the back. For this, I used all-purpose glue. It doesn't really matter if you put the glue on the paper, or on the book first. Because this glue dries faster, I had to work fast. I first only pasted in half of the page and then pasted the second half. Make sure that you keep the book open while pasting in the second half and not bend it like I did here. After it has dried, do the same with the other side of the book. with how this turned out it is so pretty this is one of my favorite colors and then I really loved how the gold stickers turned out it looks so cool I also like the fact that I have two bookmarks and they each look different which really gives it that personalized style and then when you open it this is what it looks like it's so fancy it's like when you read it you have to read it in like a fancy accent like this journal belongs to 
Yona Marie. I don't know how to sound fancy. Anyway, um, so the first page will be a bit sturdy, but then, oh, so nice. It's really so nice. I am so happy with this. This is the bookmarks, which is so nice. So in the beginning, it will still be a bit hard to fold. Like you can see, if, if you just, it will stay open. So what I am doing currently is I'm just keeping it under a few um, heavy books just to make it flat. And then also what it will struggle with in the beginning is completely opening. Um, that will also get better with time because you do want your book completely open when you um, journal, of course. But yeah, I am super happy with this. I hope you guys enjoyed me creating my very own bullet journal. You will be seeing me using this in future videos. I am so excited. Please let me know in the comments below if you're going to create your own bullet journal. And if you create one, please, please tag me on Instagram. I really want to see it. Also, please give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed me creating my own bullet journal. And if you want to see more of the type of content that I create, um, subscribe to my channel. I have this goal of 100 subscribers before the end of June. Maybe it's a bit big, but I think it's possible. And it would really, really help out if you could subscribe to my channel. A lot of the videos that I create on my channel is bullet journal related. And then a lot of the other videos on my channel are DIY videos. So this one was kind of something in between. It was bullet journaling and DIY. So you get the best of both worlds. Yeah. Okay, guys. Thank you so much for watching and subscribing. And then I will see you in the next video.